I think it's time. I believe it is time to look at the news. That's right, gamers. On my day off, on my day off, of course, obviously, Aina decided to drop some pretty interesting news, actually. And it's specifically about strike missions. Guild Wars 2 is betting on bite-sized raid encounters with End of Dragons. So, it, you, they describe what it is. It's a focus on single boss fights with raid-like complexity. But, okay. I'm, you know what? I'm going to open with this. I'm going to open with this, guys. Do you notice anything familiar about this character? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's My Trin. My Trin is the first strike mission boss. Now, you might not go, you might go, whoa, that's kind of interesting. You know, look, there's a picture of Bill Gates. He's got a guitar as well. Isn't that fascinating? And you'd be right. But I have to call out ArenaNet for this. Okay? They said, oh, we can't possibly show any gameplay from Strike Missions because it would spoil the story. Oh my god, we could never do that. Well, why are you spoiling the story in a random article then? Okay? And don't get me wrong, PC Gamer is significant. But why are we not seeing gameplay? Like, if you're so concerned, right, about um, not spoiling the story, then why have you done it right here? What's... They could have been... They could have made this really, really exciting by showing gameplay, showing these strike missions, showing how hard they are, showing the devs playing the challenge mode, the difference between normal mode and challenge mode. Could have easily done that if they wanted to. Or even just show the normal mode, not spoil the CM. Like, not spoil the CM is fair, right? Just show the normal mode. Very exciting. Some of the moves have, you know, the devs talk about it, have camera on there. But, but oh no! Right? Of course not. But they could have just disabled the dialogue, disabled like any cutscene that plays with that, right? All that kind of stuff. And really got people excited about these strike missions. And by the way, tease the villain, because by the way, it obviously doesn't spoil the story, because it's just, oh, my trend is here. Everyone's getting excited, right? It's a bit like, um, it's a bit like, you know, the Wrath of the Lich King, right? Where you show Arthas, you know it's going to be, you know, you're going to have to fight the Lich King Arthas at the end of it, but you just show him looking all menacing. They could easily do that and promote the game. Hey, maybe Shiro's coming back. Maybe Kanaxo is coming back. Maybe Urgoth is back. Maybe, hey, my Trin is back. Oh, wait, yeah, she is. I I do have to be very critical of reading on, the, on this because I do think that Ender Dragons, it's not hype right now. People are not hyped up, and it just seems that they've contradicted themselves here on why they can't hype things up. And where they obviously could have done now, as they've clearly demonstrated here, they can show it and it doesn't spoil anything. They even show the arena, like where you're going to fight my trend is being displayed here. Right? So, I don't have to say. I ain't it. You got to show us some juice. You got to show us the content. You got to actually hype it up. But let's see what they actually have to say, right? Let's see what they have to say. Okay. So, the pressure is on ain't it. To deliver with Ender Dragons. That is indeed true. Um, the ending of the episode was maligned by the community of feeling too rushed. Very, very true. Okay. Discarding story beats, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Is there only then for Ender to show that shift away from whatever the Icebridge saga was originally intended to be worth it for this third expansion to make plays excited for the future of Guild Wars 2? Uh, ahead of the release, I got a chance to find out if it will. A hands-on session offered a whirlwind tour of a few new areas and activities, including an event chain, one of the new maps, and a peek at the new guild hall. Um, okay, yeah, 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 exciting. Ooh, the final competition where players defeated the leader of Canthus Min Min uh, Ministry of Purity, which is actually the final boss there. Very cool, actually, because that is, of course, a little bit of Mesmer teaser there. Go and play Guild Wars 1 for that one. Guys, you want to know the best AMD motherboards in 2022? I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by the ads. Hey, PC Gamer, it's working. Your site is operating well here. Ooh, ooh yeah, okay, never mind. It's all promising, but as a long-time player, it's hard to get a sense of how these activities will feed into the game's larger systems. Fishing is a fun pastime, but how will it tie into the longer um, term of uh, loop of collections and crafting? A siege shell centric public event is fun and new challenge, but will the structure of map currents and rules keep players coming back for years to come? Wait, it, don't we already know this? Like, legend, this uh, fishing is to do with legendaries and probably unlocking the turtle. And the mount works everywhere, not just... Um, here. And yeah, I, I imagine there's no way Anet are going to make the same mistake that they made with Path of Fire and make the maps kind of crappy and not very rewarding. There's no way they'll do that again. Also, bonus meme, new legendary being shown off here. I like that. There we go. Pretty cool, actually. I love to see it. I love to see it. The strike missions I played. So let's go to the strike missions here, guys. We know what a strike mission is. We don't need to read it. It's a boss. It's a single boss. It's got mechanics. Uh, what are the easy ones available in this expansion? Interesting note there. Feels grander than its predecessors. For one, it ties in more neatly with Guild Wars 
ongoing story, returns the, uh, the, the, uh, featuring the return of Living World Season 1, My Trin. This in itself came as something of a relief. I wasn't a Guild Wars 1 player, so I was concerned that an expansion based on that game's Canther region would be filled with fan servers I had no connection to. Yeah, honestly, I don't think anyone would do that. Um, they're gonna, there's gonna be fan servers and, like, little hints, but there's no way they're gonna go that hard, right? They're not gonna go that crazy. Yeah, bringing the Aether Blades back makes a lot of sense. They kind of tease us a few times. Well, they even talked about it on that stream there as well. Okay, yeah, there's going to be a big payoff, guys. Big buff. Tell me the juice. Give me the content, guys. Give me the energy. Uh, at its core, it's about movement and positioning, and the game's best bosses embrace that. Mitron's basic attacks are a patchwork of AoE patterns, and on top uh, are a selection of greatest hits familiar to long-term players. AoEs will target and follow each player, forcing the entire team to separate and avoid taking multiple hits. There's the green AoE field that players are to stack on to share out the damage. There's a variation of the Fractal Flux, the bo uh, the, uh, uh, fractal flux Bomb uh, that needs to be taken away from the group to avoid dropping massive damage over time on top of your party. There's Bullet Hell Orbs. This is actually very interesting. It seems that they're actually looking to blend a lot of Fractal design into this, like that kind of Bullet Hell, more movement-oriented style. But they're also looking to... Um, I think this is a little bit Final Fantasy inspired, with like the very well telegraph stuff and they want to use um they want to use repeated telegraphing that is to say they want to use always go in the green circle spread because of this i think they want to really establish these key visual mechanic markers across all the strike missions so people can kind of translate knowledge rather than having to kind of go from scratch every single time they've actually talked about this a little bit before and we we've seen this design emerging in strike missions i think with much better telegraphing compared to other games like these big orange kind of cones right and green circles to stack in um you know with arrows pointing at them so i think this is a good design pattern there it kind of slightly breaks immersion but it is good design overall uh, let's see here. It's hard to get, um, yeah. Uh, it's hard to get a sense of m wait, the my trend. Spell incorrectly. Someone call the editor. Ooh. In the demo, we had invincibility. Wait, in the we had invincibility? Wait. Dude, they could, they've had easy mode this entire time. And to avoid spending time in ensuring we had a good distribution of roles. But in terms of pure stuff happening, it feels close to the current Whisper of Jaw mag mission. The one most likely to cause a pug to wipe. Okay, that's good. So they've got like a visual eyeball there as well. Multiple attacks uh, stack on top of each other as Valve is um, resembling a dance of dodges and quick thinking. You're invulnerable. How do you know? Play a stack separate and come together for a quick burst. I actually really like that. I think making it um, movement based is really good. Uh, I, I think I like this. The, the, again, wouldn't it be great if Ana had shown us this? It would have been really cool. Really hype, by the way. Um, Aynet, what are you doing? Um, because I like this. I think a really big issue I have with PvE is it doesn't punish you for... It, it, the game allows you to be in your optimal state all the time. And by that, I mean you're always stacked, right? So you're always near the heels. You're always um, covered in boons, right? The game never punishes you for that or prevents you from being in your optimal state, right? This is a huge issue. It, it's a big part of why PvE ends up getting pretty trivial, particularly once you have a, a good strategy and composition. Because again, you're always in your, your I can never die when we're all stacked. You can revive people faster, right? You can heal people, barrier people, boon people really easily. And the fact that these fights are going to be bullet hell, movement spreading, I think that's actually very good. Very, very good indeed. I really hope that um, this is something that we see across all of the strike missions and pushed honestly in raids and push it even harder in the in the challenges. Like really push that position aspect i think because that is actually a skill a lot of guild wars 2 players suffer um, are not very good at and i think it's one of the things that can punish um mistakes really hard is positioning so this is a, that sounds really good boss rush ah oh words from the man himself We've taken the feedback on Icebridge Saga Strike missions to heart, says Cameron Rich, senior game designer at ArenaNet. We're focusing more on mechanics that cannot easily be ignored. Nice! Um, simplifying the raw process, that's very good. The current strikes are a bloody mess. And providing an increased difficulty option in the form of a challenge mode. It feels like ArenaNet has learned from how players now complete strike missions like Bone Skinner, which are essentially difficult, made easier by a 10-person party to simply out heal at central mechanic. Yeah. And honestly, the, in raids too, like a lot of raid mechanics just get brute forced. It's way easier um, to brute force than to actually do the mechanics, even in raids a lot of the time. Is new set of strike missions are designed with puzzles that can't, cannot be brute forced. You either learn the mechanics or you wipe. That is a bold statement. That is a very bold statement. I hope that's true. Some of the game's current uh, current crop of strike missions are longer and less focused. In one, Forging Steel, players take uh, control of a Char Warband, escorting a tank across a large map of challenges and activities. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it's also the one that full clerics always skip. Oh, but why? 
why? The reason is, is because it's honestly very, very dull and not very rewarding for the time investment. I actually don't entirely agree with this statement. I don't think it's because it's long. I think it's because the reward balance is off. And I think because it's very, very boring and you can't speed it up very much. You, know, you can a little bit with super speed, but not that much. It is time gated, essentially. That is why people skip it. Um, I think stuff like a longer meta event people will stick around for. Here's a great example. People love to do stuff like Drizzlewood Coast, right? But Drizzlewood Coast is actually a pretty damn long encounter. Uh, to do a full Drizzlewood, it will take, what, like half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes? If you do both sides, it will be like upwards of an hour a lot of the time in a pug group to actually complete both things there. But people will always do that. Why? Very good reward ratio. And honestly, it can feel pretty cool, right? It's a pretty cool thing um, with, you know, all the enemies going there. And it's even a time gate. So, you know, it's kind of semi-time gated, but because it's so rewarding and kind of a cool theme, people play it, right? Why do people not play Dragon Stand? Well, Dragon Stand, again, is quite slow. It will take you 30 to 40 minutes in a pug group. Um, but the reason people don't play it, because even though you can actually speed it up a lot, and it's epic, one of the most epic encounters in the entire game, the reward balance is not there. It's a bit old in its design. You beat the boss, you have to go around collecting all these pods. They've kind of done away with this design um, in later games. The, the chests basically all appear around the end boss, and you just loot all of them in one go, rather than having to like, kind of like explore the map and like loot all the chests afterwards with these noxious pods. If they actually address that, people would definitely do it. Okay? People would 100% do it. And I think this... I don't think ArenaNet should be afraid of longer um, or even multi-boss strike missions. I do not think that them being long and less focused is why they don't do it. It's because the reward balance is off. Uh, and obviously, it's not that engaging either because, you know... <laughs> yeah, so, escort quests, not all that, always that much fun. So, the Ender Dragon strike missions each have unique elements that let them clearly stand apart from each other. And each strike mission focuses on a single unique encounter. That is indeed what a strike mission is. Uh, this allows our development team to hone their craft in creating satisfying bosses with a variety of mechanics and for players to display their skill and take them down. Nice! The general rule for instance combat. Red things bad. Good call. And we're even getting some interesting mechanical leaks here as well. We have this uh, orb, which may be moving around, like chasing people, I believe, is kind of what was implied there. So it will like target a single bear. Small arena too. Notice that. It's a very small arena. You can look at my trin here. Um, she's very, very, you know, she's giant, but, you know, there's actually not a lot of room here. Kind of interesting there to note. And the environment there as well. As someone who spent plenty of time in the game's current strike missions, I'm confident the Mitron fight was better than any of them. Oh! I'm glad to hear it, PC Gamer. But the gamble for ArenaNet is that Strike Missions are an attractive proposition for returning and new players, especially given the prestige much almost placed on full raids. Well, I mean, it works with Final Fantasy, right? Like, Final Fantasy basically has Strikes as their prestige content, so I think that's fine. Um, over a fun, engaging encounter that like players can tackle, even though they have an hour of time to play. Yeah, this is actually a massive advantage in terms of accessibility for Strike Missions. You can do a full clear of Strikes in 20 minutes, right? Um, how long did it take us today? We did it on stream, right? Strike missions are what? If you're actually pumping, if you've got like, if you've got like a, a static group, right? Or like a good group that you do fractals with, uh, you know, fractals and strikes with every day, you're done like 20. They are very quick, very, very fast. And that is huge. Accessibility is important. It really is. Um, we believe that the accessibility and think that um, Ender Dragon's iteration in the game modes builds on the strengths of the game mode while showcasing lessons we've learned. I actually agree. I believe them as well. I think Arena is really learning um, from a lot of the things that, you know, a lot of the criticism and feedback they received on a lot of their content in general. Like, this is why EOD is exciting. It may not be the biggest expansion. It may not be even the most fancy expansion. Um, but I think it will be the best expansion purely because of this iterative process. You know, it's not as flashy as mounts or gliding or a new profession. I think... It is the, it's, it's the boring expansion, right? And I mean that in the best possible way. It's the expansion where Anet say, oh yeah, guys, we fixed the game, right? We don't have like a brand new sparkly wand to like wave around at you, except for the new legendaries, I guess. But yeah, we fixed it. We did it. We fixed the game, right? It, it's boring in the best possible way. They just said, right, here's what's wrong with it. Fix it. And I love that. You know, I absolutely love that. Yeah, it's the Eat Your Vegetables expansion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Endgame activity doesn't take an entire evening to slog through. It is worth bonus meme here, guys, actually. Raids are also pretty quick fire, too. Like, a full raid wing is like 20 minutes, right? Or like half an hour, if you're in like a decent group, to be fair. And strike missions, if you get hard stuck, it will still take you a long time. But, you know, it's not like raids are that much slower. I, I really do hope for slightly longer um, encounters. 
I'd really like to see a multi-boss strike mission or, or even a, well, they kind of said that won't happen, but I would love to see a more raid-like thing or simply just the reintroduction of raids at some point. Look, we make strike missions really popular and then Anet bring back, brings back raids. No copium, boys. No copium. So let's say, will strike missions be Guild Wars 2's de facto instance content in the game going forwards? Because, yeah, littered with endgame content, like Judges, Fractals, and Raids, some abandoned, some others have been gone without an addition for some not in a while. Yeah, that's that's what we like to call abandoned. For Ender Dragons, our focus is on leveling up the strike mission experience for players. We aim to make sure that they are um, they are the vehicle through which we can bring high quality new endgame content. In that way, you could say strikes have the spotlight on them right now. Seriously, guys. I'm getting mad, right? Why was there not a stream about this? They, they've they already shown... At, you know, this is a gameplay screenshot, essentially. They've leaked that Mitron is here. Why didn't they hype this up? Hello? I'm sorry, guys. I don't understand. My tiny, smooth brain is not comprehending why they don't actually set to rest one of the biggest concerns that players have about their game that they don't have a cohesive plan for end game uh, repeatable content this is the big one that everyone always gives them shit for oh ain't it abandoning dead game mode irrelevant game mode why were they not hitting us with this i understand chat uh in that way, yeah. That said, we don't view any of our instance content as de facto for endgame players by any means. Ooh, very open-ended. Very interesting um, that uh, he says that, actually. That does actually imply that they want to at least kind of maintain the other game modes. To be honest, I think he's mostly referring to fractals there. I'd be very surprised to see ArenaNet giving up on five-player content. It's very much expected in an MMO and very well known as dungeons, right? That is what people from WoW and Final Fantasy are going to know about, and I think fractals are necessary and i think we'll definitely see another fractal raids definitely up in the air um that might take a little bit more um you know it's entirely possible that if strike missions go really well maybe they can add an easy mode to raids at some point if if, if they get everything goes really well they can make that more accessible and then if easy mode works then they would maybe add more raids over time there too for that slightly more instance content approach there as well but there you go uh, for now, I'm happy with what I played. I can't talk about everything I experienced, but this single boss fight had more surprise and personality than anything I've seen from the game's instance content in some time. If Anet can maintain that level of quality and spectacle throughout, then strike missions could be the reason alone for MMO fans to check out Ender Dragons. Wow, that is really, really glowing. And I know that, obviously, you know, we don't really know for sure, but that sounds really cool. It sounds like this is... A, the, the way that he's def he says that implies this is actually a long encounter. Yeah. Uh, that's what that implies to me. Now... Obviously, uh, and multi-phase too. Like the fact that it, he's talking about surprises, that is telling me, okay, we actually have a multi-phase, complicated, long encounter that changes. And now he was literally invulnerable, okay. And I imagine their DPS wasn't great, so it might. We'll see how that works out. But to me, that very strongly implies it's a longer encounter, okay. Um, and. Oh, can you imagine if all of the CMs are a bit like I, so they have like an extra phase? Oh, I say I love that. I love this, this kind of that mythic WoW-esque. Um, oh yeah, it's a new phase. Yeah, uh, I, like my biggest fantasy. Okay, whoa, 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 guys, go. Do you know what my biggest fantasy in the entire game is? They go back and rework Demos CM. Okay, you phase Demos to 10%. Okay, but when you get there, Instead of him being at 10% health, he actually goes to 30% health and climbs up onto the arena. You go to like a different arena that's a bit bigger to accommodate this. He climbs up onto the arena in mega demon mode and starts stomping around all over the place and has like an entirely different phase. Ah, that'll be so good. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Mega demon mode. Very unlikely to happen, but it would be cool. Yeah, this sounds great. Uh, they, you know, they're going to be very different from each other. They're going to be well terrified. I'm loving what they're saying about the telegraphing there, the challenge modes. There's going to be four, by the way. I kind of forgot to say this, right? Um, but yeah, there's four strike missions coming out with End of Dragons. This was actually confirmed. Um, it speaks about the first one here, my trim, but there are four new strikes, again, with challenge modes, which is very, very exciting. Huge bonus meme, by the way, actually. 
Uh, the challenge modes, and I, I think this is kind of fun, actually. They're going to be releasing the CMs. They talked about this in an article with Cameron Rich um, on their own blog, on the Arena blog. Uh, they're going to be released periodically after launch, right? So they're going to, they're, they're not dropping them all at the same time. Uh, and they're not, they're not in at launch, right? So you have to wait. So you have, like, the initial hype of playing through the story and the strikes. Then you get the hype of the CMs coming online. So there's going to be, like, a, there's going to be four kind of, race to world's first style events on the strike missions now to be honest i don't, I, I don't know Th this is the thing right this is why i think there needs to be a stream or like a q a about this cameron how hard is it cameron knows because again cameron is actually he plays final fantasy he's into like raiding he's a hardcore player you know he was on the arena extra live stream with me and you know the other devs I, he knows what difficulty means he understands what difficulty is I, I want to know how hard is the CM? Are we talking Kadim CM? Are we talking Doom CM? Or are we talking more like Conjure Amalgamate CM, right? Like what? Ah, ah. It's just, I, I really wish that they would communicate about this because th this is one of, in my opinion, the big headline Big changes the game is having. Strike missions are the end game. We're bringing, we're adding more of them. They're on launch. We've got end game PVE on launch. This has never happened in Guild Wars 2 before, I believe. Even raids were after launch. This is in the game day one. This is huge, massive, absolutely insane drop, um, right, of, uh, of content and a complete paradigm shift in the way Arena is developing their game. Why don't we know about it? Why aren't they giving us um, information, right? Like, how hard is it? How do the rewards work, right? You know, like, is it, you know, are the CMs daily repeatable? We don't even know that, right? We don't even know if the CMs are daily or if they're one time or if they're even repeatable. Okay, we, um, I, actually, I think, um, I think they do say, I think they did say it's repeatable, actually. I'm not sure, though. Someone can fact check me on that. Um, but yeah, there you go. Not good to drop it on day one. No other game does that. Well, I think that's why they're not doing it with the challenge modes, to be fair. Um, but they like other games will drop dungeons day one. Uh, WoW will have dungeons day one of X-Pac, right? Um, they won't have raids day one, right? Like raids comes out come out later, which, you know, is a different thing. But strikes are, you know, kind of like dungeons, dungeon-esque style stuff. And the challenge modes aren't, right? But there you go. Yeah, those are my thoughts on that article. Very good news, actually. I like it a lot. Um, and I really hope to see a Rednet really push and stick to their guns because I think strike missions can be really, really good. I think it can be the catalyst that can make 10-player content in Guild Wars 2 reborn. And I've got to say, this is a really nice article. Um, so well done there. Phil, oh, nice name. Phil Savage. I think it's well written. And I think that the way he's describing this sounds really, really exciting, actually. I love to hear it. I really, really do. Fantastic article. Fantastic news. Love it. Big hype. Let's go. Right, that's the news. That's the news.